Part Crafter just changed how structured 3D mesh is going to be generated. They say that Part Crafter stands for Structured 3D Mesh Generation via Compositional Latent Diffusion Transformer, which is a mouthful for sure. But you can't argue with these results. As you see in this images right here, you see that it was able to make a 3D part level generation of a freaking Lego Spider-Man. And they were able to get each individual part just off the image alone, which is crazy. Not only that, they did it here with this axe and in this race car, able to take one image and being able to deconstruct its part using an image, which is absolutely insane. They say they introduced Part Crafter, which is the first structured 3D generational model that jointly synthesizes multiple segment semantically meaningful and geometrically distinct 3D mesh from a single RGB image. They say unlike existing methods that it either produce monolithic 3D shapes or follow two stage pipelines, like by first segmenting the image and then reconstructing each segment, they say Part Crafter does a totally different thing. Part Crafter adopts a unified compositional gener generational architecture that does not rely on pre-segmentation inputs condition on a single image it simultaneously denoise multiple 3d parts enabling end-to-end -end part aware generations of both individual objects and complex multi-object scene mouthful i know that was a lot right there but basically what they're saying is more traditional approaches either just try to do like a one shot of an image and then you try to see what you can get off of one image and try to see what parts there are the two-step approach that other people use they use a pre-segmentation where let's say you see a person and you want to get the arms and the legs the head and the torso they'll pre-segment it out with hey i'm a crop just to get the arm i'm a crop just to get the legs and the head and the torso by itself and then i'll make the parts out of the already pre-segmented pre-cropped photos which is not a bad way it's a decent two-step approach to it i would say so but different they use a compositional generational architecture so it doesn't rely on pre-segmentation and only uses a single image and so it can the ai is trained to see the different parts of the image as segments so it's not pre-segmenting it but the ai already is trained to see the different parts of the segments and that's what they get with this part crafter and the results really speak for themselves as you see they are able to do like this freaking dinosaur image and you see how the colors are all different colors denoting the different points or parts that are part of the dinosaur and then the gray shows you the parts as they come apart and come together they even did one of a scythe so if it's not really too many parts, the scythe is what two parts it seems like, it'll show you where the two parts are at. And they do a pretty good job of it. But they also said that the part crafter doesn't just rely on what you give it. They can infer different pieces, even if it's not explicitly said in the image. So the couch isn't just one image or one piece. You usually have a couch base and it has a cushion and they may have a pillow. All those are different parts that makes up a seat. And you see even this example where they have exactly that, where you see they were able to highlight the difference between the legs, the base, the pillows, and the cushion that you sit on. And then another one with another seat here where you see it's the difference between the legs, the seats, and the cushion. They also did one of this old timey telephone and just a few other examples. I like that they did one of a, well, I don't want to say the word because of YouTube, but let's say a Fortnite blaster, right? They did one of those too. They did just even one of these shoes. They had a My Little Pony. Of course, they had the Dark Vader Lego, which is absolutely insane. But not only that, they also had image to 3D scene generation where you can put in not just one image. You, well, you can put in one image, but it can have multiple parts to it. How they put in this image of this bedroom and the 3D scene generation was able to infer what the rest of the bedroom looked like. As you see in the photo, the photo was actually a side shot of the bedroom, but it was still able to infer what the rest of the bedroom looked like. Same thing with this bedroom, where it can infer what it looks like. And some of these other bedrooms, seem like they have a bedroom fetish going on. So it may do really strong with bedrooms, may not do too well with sinks, but we don't know. We definitely have to put that to the test. 
test. But they did say that it was trained over 50,000 3D matches to come out with this. I think they did 130,000 3D objects in with 100,000 having multiple parts. They said the total data set comprised of about 50,000 50, part label objects and 300,000 individual parts, which is cool. So it has that type of knowledge to pull from when looking at whatever you're sending it. That's the power behind training it on high quality data. And the use cases kind of speak for themselves. We see this with Legos and everything like that. So if you wanted to recreate your own toy, as you may see, this would be how you would do it. And you can maybe even 3D print this. So having this make the 3D parts and you just 3D print out the parts and just create it using the 3D images that you have. This can go really well for hobbyists, but also if you make games, if you just want to have inspiration about what this thing will look like in 3D, you can use that as well as then map the legs. Let's say how they did the dinosaur earlier. You can then map the different parts of the dinosaur's mouth, legs, or whatever, so you can walk, run, or whatever you want to do, which I think is pretty cool. Even if you have a lot of money to burn, you can maybe even do this with mechanical parts. Think about trying to 3D print a bolt or a tire or a rotor. You can maybe not 3D print the ones you have at your house, but there are some 3D printers out there that can do real metal and sculpt real metal. It's thousands of dollars, but it'd be a cool little project. But tell me what you think. Do you think this AI model is all that it's hyped up to be? Or are you looking for something a little bit more? Either way, if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest AI news, you should definitely like and subscribe. With that being said, your boy Dex, not Dexter.